In 2020, you have the ability to create custom cabinetry. You could be using a catalog from a custom manufacturer, or you could use 2020's custom catalog, which we call Design Plus. An example of this would be the corner, the lower left-hand corner on our floor plan. You'll see on the right-hand side that we've added base 33s and wall 33, 36s, and we've left an opening on the right-hand side if you're facing that wall. To your left, we have catalogs. And in the catalog drop-down, our spec book shelf, several catalogs are called Design Plus. We have Design Plus Frameless, Design Plus Frame, and a Design Plus Frameless that's in metric. These are generic custom catalogs built right into your 2020 system. When you go to the custom catalog, you have options like you would any other catalog. You could choose bases and base corners and talls and walls. In this case, I'm going to choose a tall cabinet and create a tall cabinet from scratch. We'll double click on tall, and when you double click on tall, it'll give you your standard cabinets in three inch increments, your utilities and oven cabinets and so on. But there's a feature at the very top called tall custom. If I double click on Tall Custom, it'll ask me what type of tall custom cabinet would I like to build. Do I want to have a cabinet with vertical openings, horizontal openings, refrigerator units, and so on? We'll choose vertical, and it'll ask us now, how many openings do you want in your cabinet? In this case, we have options from one opening to five openings. Let's make this one four today. We have options of making a left or right hinge door or having it be a double door cabinet. I'll choose the double door. I will drag it to my floor plan and drop it. Now, this is different than the other catalogs that you've been working with. Typically, you're grabbing a preset cabinet, dragging it to the floor plan and dropping it. You already know with height and depth. In this case, we're custom building a cabinet. So the first thing it's going to ask us is or show us is, number one, there's four openings. And how would we like to fill those areas? At the top, it says Section 1. When we populate these spaces with features, we are going to be working from the bottom to the top. So we're building from the floor to the ceiling. We'll click on Section Style 1, and it gives us a list of options for that section. Let's choose two drawers. Section Style 2. Again, a list of options. Maybe your customer uh, has indicated, whoops, I did that too fast. I made a mistake. We can always go back and change that. Maybe your customer said they want to put a pigeonhole unit instead. We can choose number three. And in this case, let's put a wine rack in. And maybe at the top of this cabinet, let's place a couple of glass doors. You'll see that I have custom built the cabinet very quickly. And when I click OK, I can drop this on the screen. And when I left click, I can also determine how wide it is. I can even type the width up here in your edit box. But I'm just going to fill the remaining space with the cabinet and click, and now I've placed my cabinet. Now, that was very simple, but it truly, it really isn't the cabinet that I wanted to place just yet. And the reason I say that is, is if we right-click on it, we go to Attributes. Let's take a look at it. And you'll see that I have two drawers. I have a pigeonhole unit, which is much too tall. And I have a wine rack that's probably a little bit too tall for, for what I wanted as well. It has created basically four equal spaces. We can modify that by going to the Variables tab. And under Variables tab, you will see lots of different options for changing the variables of this cabinet. You can truly change each and every component piece of this cabinet, size, and texture. I'm going to go and say, in this case, let's choose configuration. Now, configuration is what determines what goes in each of the openings and, number two, the dimensions of the openings. Let's go to section number one and say, our drawers were going to be 34 and a half inches, so they lined up with the cabinets to the left. I'll click on section two, and when it does that, you'll see that it increased the height of the drawers and decrease the height of the other units appropriately. Section number two, let's make that wide, let's make that, I'm sorry, pigeonhole unit nine inches. We'll click on it. Now I have a nine inch pigeonhole unit. Section number three, my wine rack was going to be an even 18 inches. 
Again, if I click in any field, it automatically makes the adjustment to the cabinet. And when you're looking at the items within the attributes, you can always right click on them and change the view. I know I like to work, and here's a wireframe view. A lot of people work in wireframe. I like to work in the hidden line mode when I'm editing. So there's an example. Let's click OK, and let's take a real quick look at the results. We'll pull back here. We'll stand back around our kitchen table and click. And you'll notice on the right-hand side, you now have a custom cabinet that you literally have built in just a few minutes.